This screencast discusses the use of Hess's law. Hess's law is a way to obtain the enthalpy, usually called heat, for a reaction that might be difficult to measure experimentally. Since enthalpy, or in this case the enthalpy of reaction, is a state function, we need only look at the initial and final state. We don't care how it gets there. So in this case, our initial state is the reactants and the final state is the products. So we can create a set of reactions with their own enthalpies that will ultimately lead to the reaction of interest. The overall enthalpy for the reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps of the reaction. The things that you need to be aware of when you're doing a Hess's law calculation. First of all, all reactants must appear on the left-hand side and all the products have to appear on the right. Also, all intermediates must occur on both the left and right side of the reaction. That way they can cancel each other out since they aren't part of our reaction of interest. If you reverse one of the reactions, you're going to have to change the sign of the enthalpy. Why? Because if the reaction in one direction loses heat, the reverse reaction must produce heat. And if we multiply or divide a reaction, we're going to have to multiply or divide the enthalpy as well. Remember that the enthalpy of the reaction is for the reaction as written. So let's look at an example. Let's say we want to find the heat of reaction for the combustion of methane. We're given the following reactions and their enthalpies, and we're going to use them to figure out what the heat of enthalpy or reaction is for the combustion of methane. So let's see what belongs on which side. So reaction one gives us the methane on the correct side and in the correct amount. So we'll leave it and its enthalpy the way it is. However, we now have the intermediate CH2O that is not part of the reaction of interest. So we need to get rid of it. How? Well, it needs to be on both the left and right side of the reaction so that it cancels out. So currently in reaction two, CH2O is on the same side as in reaction one. However, we can't switch reaction one since the methane needs to be on the left. So let's reverse reaction two. Note that when we reverse the reaction, we have to reverse the sign. So now the enthalpy of this reaction is negative 518 kilojoules. So our CO2 and our two H2Os are on the correct side. However, our waters are in the gas form and we need them liquid. So we take reaction three right here, we multiply it by two since we have two H2Os and reverse the direction since we need to condense, not vaporize. Here we have to both reverse the sign of the enthalpy as well as multiply that enthalpy by two. So we're left with minus 88 kilojoules. Let's simplify our reactions and add up the enthalpies to get the enthalpy for the reaction of interest. We have our CH4, which we want here. Let's get rid of our CH2O. We have our two H2O gases here that we'll get rid of here. And now when we write out the reaction, we have methane plus, notice here, we have two O2. And that goes to CO2 plus H2O liquid. Now we add up all these numbers which equals minus 890 kilojoules. And we have our delta heat of reaction for the combustion of methane. 